is here for itself. But Roy doesn't. Uh, I mean, for, as a reader, I would say, how many out there read the Sun magazine? Let's hear it. Okay. We have one hand up. Uh, how about that? Yeah, there you go. Um, actually, what we should say is that, uh, what we should say is that, uh, that the, the Sun crew will be here tonight on this, uh, it'll be a larger stage tonight for pulling the platforms, um, doing readings and conversation with whoever gathers, and I know we've already got quite a few reservations from the Sun fans around the neck of the woods here. Um, but what I know as a Sun fan is that when I would start my issue of the Sun, I would read it cover to cover. Inevitably, you tear up reading the sun. Something in the sun is going to move you to tears. Reliably. Whether it's from the letters to the editor, which are incredible, or the great section called Reader's Right, which we should describe, um, and, or the incredible uh, feeling of reading a, a magazine that has not one advertisement in it. Thank you so much for that. That means a lot. And I'm sure we're going to thank our readers who support us yeah. by, by uh, responding to our fundraising that we send out into the press and which makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a nice web presence. Too. Uh, you were talking about organizations that came out of the 60s, early 70s that people didn't even know about. But uh, I'm thinking about our own experience. We were kind of late to the... Uh, uh, technological digital mode and uh, even our website which one time I thought was kind of cool is really outdated. I was wondering when did you uh, get your website up and uh, did you always have it with such a uh, nice presence that was a little funkier? Uh, and is it involved? <laughs> Well, I'm talking to Lee outside. He never heard of the sun, so I can't remember what's going on. 
very interesting magazine. They wanted to go, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, I was just, you know, looking for a place to sell a story, and I sold the story, and I got some nice money for it, like $200 a lot of stuff. We're paying a lot more now. Yeah, oh, no, that was in 94. That was when we were still sort of you know, swapping. Uh, you know, we started it. Uh, what's it going to be next? I never had an idea that I had a relationship with these people that anybody would, um, would care. But uh, and I don't exactly, I still don't know how I fit in this sound. Because, uh, I don't know. But, uh, but apparently I do. I, I, uh, Developed a pretty close relationship with these people, and now we're all hanging around together at AWT. So yeah, one of the things we should mention. I'm going to say I'm going to put something on the sun because I think all of the greatest values of our generation, and I'm just so thankful that we get to do so much of this work. So that's how it fits in. I read one of uh, Paul's stories this morning. Uh, yeah. Tell me the name of it. It's about Tr this troubled youth. The troubled youth, and it's uh, is that a true story? I mean, you it's were an essay, yeah. you were actually leaving uh, University of Iowa. Were you there in the writers' workshop or an undergrad? No, no, I don't have any education to speak of. I, <laughs> I never got a degree or anything like that. But in the story, you had just uh, had an. He had a girlfriend. He had a girlfriend. Oh, yeah. And, uh, that was Spanish teacher. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Right. And then you left and you uh, had some dough. You, you went to the, this corner of Nebraska where you had no buses, whatever. You wanted to kind of escape. And uh, you, uh, you lived in a motel and you worked in a restaurant. And then, uh, then you moved on. You went down to Heart of Hot Springs. But when I met you this morning, Turns out you moved back with a wife and kids. Right, yeah. So what's going on in Shannon, Nebraska? Uh, well, not very much of the on there. Besides <laughs> bikers, Indians, cowboys, gays, you know, all the gay, stuff you're showing up in that bar. The bar where I worked at, the, uh, <laughs> the cowboy and the gay kids biker bar. That was it. The only one of its kind. Yeah. I like it. Reminds me of the Heartland. <laughs> Yeah, it's an unusual place. Uh, people think of Nebraska as, you know, uh, you know, they get characterized by the, uh, the eastern half, which is, uh, you know, far and pretty flat. There's I-80, and you see the blue-eyed farmers with doubling their hats off in the street. But other than the uh, western Nebraska, which is much more funny with Colorado, with the ranchers and the cowboy hats. I like it a great deal. I like, uh, you know, I, I'm raising my hand. It's obviously a, a good place to have children. And it's cheap enough for me. Where did you start out? Where did you start out? Where did you start out? I was born in Denver. I was raised in San Diego. I'm a character still there. Well, I'm glad you made it to Chicago. Yep, this is my second time here. I've never been to Chicago. Well, we'll teach you everything you want to know in a short time with you. You guys are here for this conference. What is it? What's the name of the conference? And the conference is the AWP uh, Conference Association of Writers and Writing Programs. And uh, I have to say, it's, it's really interesting to be here because the, the sun doesn't really fit into the category of a literary journal. You know, we're sort of an anomaly. You know, we're among um, small academic journals that have a readership of probably mostly fewer than a few thousand. And the sun right now has about 70,000 subscribers all over the world. And plus people like me who don't subscribe to read every Right. And, and I have to say that, you know, in my job working in marketing, I sometimes feel like it's a really fortunate position because I'm just riding on the back of something that really does itself. You know, the magazine really grows organically. You know, almost, you know, it grows by word of mouth and it's made about its own momentum. I just want to ask, is organically another word you don't like besides it? There's so many words I don't like. Never, I, my life is a good All the words you don't like in it. It's like it is the real <laughs> You do get your own page, size sunbeams. Size sunbeams. Size notebooks. Oh, that yes, that's not what this is. Pretty fun. Sunbeams is, sunbeams is wonderful. Sunbeams is a page where it's 
all different quotes speaking to a single subject. And uh, it's wonderful. I mean, there are a number of wonderful things. I love the dog eared page. The dog eared page is, is one page in the magazine where you bring forth something that you probably read at one point in your lives. You had recently Rachel Carlson and Herman Hess. And you have, in one page, you bring the reader back to their sensibility and their whole ethos and put us there. I, it's, it's really cool. I mean, the, the, the assemblage of stuff. The, the correspondence by itself, the correspondence that you get from readers, is moving uh, to me. I should do something. This is what I need. Yeah, this is uh, the Live from the Heartland show brought to you every Saturday morning on WNW887 Chicago Sound Alliance. You can get us anywhere in the world if you go to www.org. And you can watch us on justin.tv slash Heartland Cafe Media. Uh, see what we look like right now. Uh, how about the looks good in my my sun with my glasses? glasses. Oh, maybe if I get far away now. Um, how about Sai you do this this uh, little yesterday was the 35th anniversary?
it was a sort of salon where people would come together and talk about the issues raised on the magazine. Yeah. And, and what people were not getting uh, an idea from what you said, yet of uh, uh, getting a grip on what the magazine's about, that's, I think, kind of the idea. You cannot get a grip on this magazine. You know, maybe you could be a little more specific about what's in it. Oh, no, you're going to be more specific. Well, I'll give you a small There's a few of you, there's a lengthy interview in the issue, right. particularly about some, something topical, something philosophical. Uh, usually not interviews with writers, but they have a different social interest, like Stuart Brown, so you can play with nuclear energy. I love the school with my own gas tank. I'm going to gas my own birth. And uh, the older medicalization of uh, right. the right. For, uh, for a Victorian scholar, as it turns out, uh, being a critique of the current psychiatry and psychiatric medications was an investigation. So James Newman, a philosopher, talking about, uh, talking about God, uh, just a book about God. Um, so, uh, so that constitutes usually about 10 pages of initial. And uh, then we print a variety of personal essays and short stories. Usually one, maybe two short stories. Uh, okay, my favorite thing. Readers write. And readers write where we, where we take a different topic for each issue and invite readers to send in a piece. And, uh, well, here, back in the issue we have here, which is good because my memory is so shoddy at this point in my life, but I don't know if I could remember recent topics, but back then, the ones we were asking for submissions on were medicine, making a glass, singing, the back door, shoes, and the rights of passage. So, what, what Sarah just said were these topics that you invite readers to write about, and, and you know, take shoes, where people go with that. Is, is wide and very fascinating. A couple of years later now, how many of these have been covered in the back? Oh, these were these were monthly deadlines. We got okay. I think the top of each month. And each, how many pages do you write to readers? Yeah. Readers write just eight pages. Eight pages. Yeah. And I recently read the one on boxes, which was incredible. Everything from uh, someone remembering a uh, childhood of playing in the. Uh, appliance boxes that came from the spider's store to someone opening up the box of their department who had committed suicide and um, waiting until the brother was in town to read it uh, and to open it and deciding at a certain point that those will deal with the rest later. I mean, incredible range of ways that people respond to those suggestions. It's brilliant. It, it is a range of stories that people tell readers write as well as in the rest of the magazine. I think for coming from the what we're looking for in the is writing that's intimate, that's authentic and intimate. Not necessarily confessional, which can get tiresome, but people who are willing to be genuine in their writing, which is something